people for the ethical treatment of animals are still killing animals. That's right, PETA is still killing animals. According to recent reports, it, PETA has gone to extreme lengths in the past to save animals from the slaughterhouse, but what the Virginia-based organization is still doing is killing animals. In fact, they killed nearly 2,000 stray cats and dogs at its shelter in the year 2013. The Center for Consumer Freedom released its annual review of PETA's Norfolk shelter, and it shows a surprising 82% euthanization rate. Now, this is slightly down to the 95% rate that they had in previous years, in 2012, I believe it was, but still, they are euthanizing animals at 82%. That is completely and utterly inhumane. It is complete and utter murder. Yet, they still go by claiming to be the people for the ethical treatment of animals. That is assuming that your ethics is that you basically think that get by killing them gives them somehow is more humane than letting them live. But I don't really see your logic there. Uh, despite outcries from fellow animal activists, PETA has declined to change any of its policies since 1998. In fact, they've gone so much as when Anonymous exposed them this past year, they tried, they threatened to sue them. And they've actually even made claims at me for saying that I was biased and that I was completely that I was completely misinformed. Yet the evidence that I've have collected in that I've actually had in a previous video seems to basically show that they yeah, that they are just complete monsters. Since 1998, the shelter has put down over 31,000 animals, and most of which it insists are injured or unadoptable. Yet we've also actually seen claims that many of these animals are actually completely healthy and were actually just animals that were taken in as strays. So in a, in a sense, they are, it's, it, they are not animals that should just be tossed into the garbage. They are animals that deserve a right to live and a right to a home. And when they say unadoptable, yeah, you just essentially mean people that, you just essentially mean that they, that you don't have a chance, of, that you've only given them about three days chance to basically live until you basically euthanize them. In fact, per, or even 30 days at most, but even after that, you don't seem to give them much of a chance. So, essentially, the numbers come from the Virginia Department of Agriculture and the Consumer uh, and Consumer Services, or VDACS, which requires such animal disclosures. In 2013, PETA killed 1,792 cats and dogs, an average of five per day. The 17,092 figure represents an 82% of all animals PETA took into the shelter throughout the year. This also doesn't seems to exclude the animals like you know birds and other exotic animals that have also been killed, of which that probably makes the percent rate just a little bit higher because there was a lot of animals and rabbits and things like that that were also murdered in 2012, and so they seem to be ex excluding that from this article. However, that's kind of uh, irrelevant right at this point. According to William Coggin from the Center for Consumer Freedom, he said, This delusional animal rights group is, take, is talking out on both sides of its mouth, on one side preaching animal rights, while on the other signing the death warrant of 82% of cats and dogs in its care. Labeling PETA as hypocritical would be the, un, would be the understatement of the year. I typically tend to agree, because as we all know, PETA does, just throws themselves out as being this you know, eco-friendly, this animal rights protecting group, yet what they really are are just essentially a bunch of syncretic fascists. They're essentially people that preach this liberal agenda, yet they seem to basically have no problem with the death penalty, at least death penalty for animals. Yet, for some reason, they probably are very anti-death penalty for humans. 
so why would you be but, but it still doesn't make any sense why would you be a, a group for the ethical treatment of animals that's supposed to protect animals to to basically preserve their life and basically try to get them into other homes and then you basically just euthanize them I mean the whole point of being the ethical treatment for animals is that you give them a chance to live that you actually give them the opportunities to have an you know have have a second chance at you know at a home or whatever the case may be yet you basically kill 82 to even 95 percent of the animals that come through your door it's really that yeah calling them hypocrites would would be just too light of a statement. They're basically terrorists is what they are. In 2005, two PETA employees were arrested in North Carolina after they allegedly kill, after allegedly killing adoptable pets and tossing their bodies into supermarket trash dumpsters. We've also seen evidence before of the different toolkits that PETA seems to have to carry out these euthanizations. As well as that, we've also seen pictures in the past of these same animals being basically put into body bags and stuff like that or even that were tossed into freezers after they were either were killed or in some cases put in there alive trial evidence showed they killed animals they described as perfect and adorable defendants Adria Hinkle and Andrew Cook were tried and cleared of animal cruelty charges in 2007 according to the Associated Press PETA obviously and adamantly disagrees and even released its own numbers in a statement this week of which are probably biased themselves yet they seem to accuse others of being biased and most likely their numbers are probably a fucking lie but just for the sake of humoring them let's go with it PETA's shelter took in and an euthanized 1,805 elderly, feral, sick, dying, aggressive, and otherwise unadoptable animals, more than 400 of whom were brought to PETA by, lo by loving but destitute guardians, desperate to alleviate their beloved animals, suffering, and many others who had been turned away by local so-called no-kill facilities that reject unadoptable animals in order to keep their euthanization statistics appealing. PETA President Ingrid Newkirk previously indicated to the Virginian pilot that the animal rights group could stop killing any time they want. Which basically is kind of like sound, the sound of a drug addict or an alcoholic who basically says, Oh yeah, I, it's like I don't have a problem, I can quit any time I want. Well, then if that's the case, then why don't you? Because essentially, like a drug addict or an alcoholic, PETA has an addiction. They have an addiction to killing animals. They get off by killing animals. They actually have a, this sense almost of euphoria from killing animals. That is their high. Well, of course, they probably have other highs that they get off of on too, but I'm just saying this seems to be one of them. They kill animals simply for the fact they, can, they think they can get away with it. But people like Anonymous, people like myself, and people that are actually true animal rights activists actually are going after PETA because they are now expo being exposed for the monsters and the terrorists and the syncretic fascists that they really are. We could become a no-kill shelter immediately. It means we would, wouldn't do as much, according to Newkirk. But according to the VDAS, in 2010 discovered that 84% of the animals PETA took in were killed within 24 hours. Take that in for a moment. PETA's so-called shelter might as well be called a slaughterhouse, said CCF. For an organization that once disgustingly compared the treatment of farm animals to the Holocaust, you'd think PETA would avoid the appearance of systematic killing. Meanwhile, PETA's senior vice president Daphna Nechamovich emphasized that pets that could be saved, that the nearly 400 adoptable animals PETA achieved were placed in carefully screened permanent homes on transfer or transferred to the Virginia Beach SPCA and other high traffic open admission shelters for a chance to be adopted according to what she said. Yet this all seems to basically be a charm offensive and essentially just a pretty much to play it off. PETA is basically scared, is what they are. 
their obvious intentions to try to sue the anonymous collective, which is almost impossible considering that you, that it's kind of hard to bring a suit against a group that is not necessarily individual or a group. They are essentially hackers, hacktivists, and they are a collective of people that do not have a hierarchy. They do not have a organ a, a legit organization that you can send an address to, and they are not somebody that you can easily bring to the table. In fact, that's kind of the whole point of the anonymous collective, is that they are anonymous. Secondly, the fact that you are trying to bring suits against people that speak out against your organization is a violation of freedom of speech and freedom of expression and the right to petition and protest. You are basically violating their First Amendment rights. In doing so, you are basically showing that you are scared, scared, evil little people that have nothing better to do than murder innocent animals and basically try to get away with it by then threatening and putting fear into people that you're going to sue them and take the, and basically take in their livelihoods. So next time that PETA thinks that they can get away with this shit, maybe they should consider that the whole ideal of being a peep, the people for ethical treatment of animals is that you give them a chance to live. That you give all animals a second chance at life. And that you don't just casually throw them away as if they were yesterday's garbage. Because essentially what PETA is doing now is nothing more than an animal holocaust. And their intentions to try to shove it off by putting the fear in people is the direct and just utter behavior of fascists. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace. Thank you.